All right, so I am back out here in Santa Monica, California, as you guys can see. I'm out here on the beach just enjoying the vibes. The weather is beautiful. The sun is back out. I hope you guys can hear me. It's windy. This video is going up regardless because you guys are going to get this knowledge. So recently I posted a video explaining how you can start van life without a van in 2023 and beyond. And in the video, one of the things that I said was become a digital nomad. If you want to get the most out of the nomadic lifestyle, you need to become a digital nomad. Now, obviously I'm a bit biased because I am a digital nomad, but the reason why I'm so passionate about this topic is because I'm of the belief that everybody in this world should be able to go to the beach and enjoy the vibes during work hours, during the work week, and just be able to live their lives the way that they want to live them, whatever that means to them, whatever that looks like to them, right? And in my experience and in my observations of other people's experiences, being a digital nomad is the best path to that level of freedom. You don't even have to be rich to experience this level of freedom. Now, if you're rich and a digital nomad, then you have the best of both worlds. But the point is, to be a digital nomad is to reclaim your freedom. The freedom which is your natural birthright. Now, with that being said, in the video, I put you guys on some game in terms of different occupations, different career paths that you can follow. However, I feel like I didn't really explain how to go about following these career paths. And that's something that I want to elaborate on in this video because I feel like it would be wrong of me to just tell you guys, become a digital nomad, become a YouTuber, become an editor, whatever, without explaining how. Now, obviously my expertise is in the content creation field as well as the author field, the self-publishing field. So those are the topics that I can speak on the most. However, I will float a few other ideas and I will prime you guys on the mindset that you will need in order to be a digital nomad. Because what a lot of people don't understand is that being a digital nomad or even being self-employed in general requires a lot of discipline. You guys see me out here on the beach and it looks like I'm just out here having fun because I am. But that's because I love what I do. At the end of the day, I'm still working. A lot of these people, they're just out here doing what they're doing. Meanwhile, I have this camera and I'm talking. Not to say that I'm better than them, but this is how I pay my bills. Therefore, I need to do this. And like I said in the last video, I get those tax write-offs as well for doing this. So with that being said, how do you go about becoming a content creator? And why is it so important to at least try content creation? Like I said in the van life video, content creation has, in my opinion, the lowest barrier to entry of any other occupation in the digital nomad space. It has the lowest barrier of entry, meaning that all you need to do is pull your phone out. You don't even need a camera. You don't need a MacBook. You don't need any other equipment other than your phone. You pull your phone out, you record a video, you edit the video on your phone, and then you post it to YouTube. You can do it all through your phone. You can read comments, you can do emails, you can even do consultations. You can build a whole brand on just your phone, right? And because of that, you don't need to invest any money whatsoever. So you literally start a business without investing any money. All you're investing is your time. And eventually, if it suits you, you reach a point where you can start to delegate work and build a team around you. Now me personally, I've chosen to remain solo and be a one man army, but not everybody is on that same wavelength as I am. But to my point in that video, that's where editors come into play. And there's a lot of different opportunities with being an editor, being a manager, social media marketing manager. There's a lot of different ways to navigate the space without even ever being on camera. And you can make a lot of money, work for yourself. And on top of that, you get to travel and see amazing things like this, right? But like I said, content creation is my area of expertise and it's where I have the most experience. So I wanna explain how you can go about building a brand on YouTube or any other platform that you wanna build a brand on, right? So. First things first, you need to be authentic. You need to be authentic. You have to be authentic. Because if you're not authentic, you're not setting yourself apart from anybody. Now I know a lot of people struggle with this because maybe they have insecurities, maybe they think that people are going to judge them, and people are going to judge you, right? People are going to judge you in a negative manner, but they're also going to judge you in a positive manner. I'm of the belief 
and you guys may disagree with this, but I'm of the belief that everybody on this planet has an audience somewhere. It's on them, however, to find it. And with the invention of YouTube and the ability to monetize this platform, it's now easier than ever to do so. So you have to be yourself because that is going to set you apart from everybody. You have to think about it. YouTube is becoming more and more saturated by the day. And that's something that deters a lot of people from starting as well. But like I said, it's free. It's free to start, so you might as well try. Now, like I said, the YouTube space is becoming very saturated, but your defense mechanism against this is your authenticity. How do you go about being authentic? What are the pragmatic steps you can take to inject, infuse your authenticity into your content and actually create a brand which can outlast you as a person? You tell your story. That's all you're doing. You're telling your story. You're documenting your story. I've made quite a few mistakes throughout my YouTube journey. And in my opinion, the biggest mistake that I ever made was straying away from this principle, telling my story. You see, there were times where my views got low and I just wasn't really receiving the monetary metrics or the numerical metrics in general, the views, subscribers, all of that. I wasn't getting the numbers that I wanted. And it was frustrating the hell out of me because I was putting in a lot of effort. I literally quit my job. I dropped out of college. I did all of these things to work for myself. And I put all my eggs in one basket with this YouTube stuff and it just wasn't working. So you can imagine that as a 19, 20 year old, I was stressed the hell out. And even once I got monetized, there were times where my channel growth would regress and then it would go up again and then it regress. What I realized over time is that these are just the ebbs and flows of self-employment. You see, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that when you're self-employed, you're not gonna have that stability, right? So you have to account for that. You account for that by being smart with your money. And you have to be smart with your money anyways because they don't take your taxes out for you. But that's a whole different discussion for a different day. The reason why my channel struggled during these periods was for one, like I said, just the ebbs and flows of being self-employed but also because I was straying away from my authenticity. I was too focused on building a brand, too focused on building a business to the extent that I neglected to tell my story, to document my story. And once I began doing that again, that was when my channel began to blossom again, right? And I recently reached 150,000 subscribers and counting, and I'm very grateful for that. But I'm even more grateful that I was able to reach that number by just being myself. You see, people don't subscribe to me for my advice. In a sense, they do, but I'm not telling people anything that they can't hear from somebody else. The reason why people subscribe to me, the reason why you watch my videos in particular, is because you just like me as a person. Not everyone is going to like me. As a matter of fact, you can hypothetically only appeal to 1% of the world's population. But 1% of the world's population is still, what, 70, 80 million people? And believe me when I tell you, you will make a good living with that many subscribers. Believe me when I tell you that, right? So you have to be authentic. And if you're living this car life, if you're living van life, if you're living the nomadic lifestyle, that in and of itself is going to set you apart. So whatever traits, whatever character qualities inspired you to take that leap of faith and live this nomadic lifestyle, pursue this life of liberation, showcase those qualities in your content, not just through documenting your process of living in a car or a van or whatever else, but just in your day-to-day -day life, the insights that you receive, the epiphanies that you have, the paradigms that you possess that ultimately lead you toward making these decisions. Break yourself down. Go deep into yourself and expose that to the world, and that will draw people in. Believe it or not, contrary to what a lot of people think, authenticity sells, and it always will sell. And not only that, but it's sustainable as well. Now, aside from being authentic, you have to be consistent. And also, I just wanna put this out there, but a lot of these principles are going to apply to any self-employment endeavor. Any self-employment endeavor whatsoever, because if you're not being authentic to yourself, the chances are you're gonna get into something just for the money, and while you can make money doing so, oftentimes, especially if you're a person who is inclined toward the nomadic lifestyle, you're not going to be able to sustain that. Right? Think about why you started the nomadic lifestyle in the first place. Those same character traits are going to prevent you from being able to do something that you don't love to do for an extended period of time. So, like I said, be authentic, but two is consistency. You need to be consistent. 
Now, consistency is subjective. If you decide that you're going to post a video every single day, then you need to adhere to that decision. You need to adhere to the standard, the expectation that you are setting for yourself. If you decide that you're going to post one video per month, then adhere to that expectation. But you need to treat this like a job. This is where people mess up at. And I understand that this may seemingly contradict the first rule of being authentic. But hear me out, okay? Your job is to be authentic. So really, if you decide to go the content creation route, you have the easiest job in the world because all you're doing is documenting the stuff that you would be doing anyways. You're just documenting your authentic life. If I didn't have this camera with me right now, I would still be sitting on this beach watching this sunset. It just so happens that I decided to bring my camera with me and put you guys on game because this is my job. This is how I pay my bills. Granted, I don't really have that many bills, but you get the point. This is how I pay my bills. And this is actually my second video that I'm filming today, man. We're out here working. We're out here in LA on the grind because I've set the standard to remain consistent. And right now for me, that's three videos per week. At one point that was posting every single day. What I found was that I can't sustain that for years on end. And ultimately I wanna make this something that I do for the long haul. Not just this, but every other branch, every other avenue that grows from this tree. And that's something I need you guys to understand about content creation is that when you create content, that's not the end all be all. You don't just want to be a content creator. Ultimately, content creation is a stepping stone. It's a very, very, very good stepping stone for really any other endeavor. Because once you have attention, you have potential. You have the potential to turn that attention into profit. Now, you wanna be very, very mindful to not look at people as numbers. That's a very, very, very big mistake that a lot of content creators, including myself at one point, can make, right? And for me, doing a meet and greet, doing consultations, doing things of that nature really enabled me to see beyond the numbers, to see beyond the numerical metrics of I have 150,000 subscribers. I was able to see that even one subscriber has the potential to change this world on their own. And I have the potential to change their lives to enable them to change the world. So you never know the full extent of your impact. But basically, you need to think about the long term. And I'm not saying you need to create a master plan right now, but the chances are content creation won't be your only passion. Really, YouTube is not meant to be a passion in and of itself. It's a way for you to showcase your passion. So if you're into videography, then get all the B-roll that you can, get all the cinematic shots and showcase that. If you're into writing maybe, spoken word poetry, showcase that. If you're into traveling, showcase that. Basketball, showcase that. Golf, whatever. You are not the only person in the world who is into what you're into. I can assure you of that. I'm living, breathing proof of that. I thought that nobody would mess with me when I started my YouTube channel. I didn't think anybody would wanna watch me. Why would somebody wanna watch me? I wasn't even popular in school. But what I found was that there are a lot of other people who probably weren't popular in school either. And it just so happens that we all connect on a deep, deep level. And that's the basis of your brand right there. And that's where you develop that connection with your audience where you can then sell them a product which will provide genuine value to them. You see, you're not just trying to turn a profit at their expense without giving something in return. No, you're providing genuine value to them. Anybody who's done a live coaching call with me can tell you. You can go look at the reviews yourself on my website or on wizio.com and you can see that people genuinely find a lot of insight in the coaching sessions that I do. And I'm not just saying that to market myself, but that just goes to show that I provide a lot of value. I don't just try to take people's money and scam them. No, I'm giving people genuine value in exchange for the money that they're providing me with. And also with my books, I'm known to give away books for free. I've given away a lot of free PDF copies of my books because ultimately I just wanna help people. Any money that I make on top of that is just the icing on the cake. But I wouldn't be able to sell any books more than likely if I didn't have this platform, right? So once you build the platform, that opens up all the other avenues. Now, like I said in that video, the van life video, content creation isn't for everyone. Being a content creator is not for everyone. Some people will turn this camera on, turn it off and never turn it back on again. And that is perfectly fine. You don't need to be a content creator. but 
Aside from being an editor, which is pretty straightforward, you just learn how to edit, you take a course on Udemy or just any other free editing course, literally YouTube University. Go on YouTube and just look up videos, tutorials on how to edit, download footage from the internet, chop it up, try different edits, different transitions, all of that, and eventually you'll get the hang of that. But if you're someone like me who's not highly passionate about videography and editing and things like that, then maybe you wanna go another route. Now, I talked about cybersecurity in the van life video, but that's just one of many trades that you can learn without going to college. You see, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out after, I think, one and a half semesters, and I've been working for myself since I was 20, and I plan on doing that for the remainder of my human life. And like I said, not everyone is cut out for that. So being able to do a trade where you can choose between being an independent contractor, starting your own practice, or just working for somebody. Although, like I said, since this video is more directed toward the nomad community, people who want to be digital nomads, the chances are you're probably going to want to work for yourself on some level. But say, for example, if you're doing cybersecurity or anything related to computers, then you can work for a company and just work from home. My dad worked from home from the time that I was, I think, eight or nine years old, all the way through the remainder of my childhood. To this day, he still works from home. And I guess subconsciously, that was my first example. He's a database administrator. He taught himself how to code. Self-taught, he taught himself how to code with just books. He read books, he connected with people who knew how to code at his job, and he just learned. He learned the skill, he doesn't have a degree in coding, he has a degree in economics, and he taught himself how to code, and now he does that full time. And I've personally observed, like I said, my whole childhood damn near, I observed his lifestyle, and he basically spends three hours, four hours at most working, the rest of the day he's just watching basketball, or just lounging around the house. And if he wanted to, he could travel like I'm doing right now. It's just, he's not really as nomadically inclined, if you will, as I am. But my point is, is that there are a lot of different ways that you can be a digital nomad without just being a content creator. Like I said, I'm going to advocate for that because that's my personal area of expertise and I also feel like it's very rewarding because you're literally just living your regular life and documenting it. It doesn't really get much better than that. But some people may not be able to stomach the instability and uncertainty of that. And especially once you get your personality involved in your brand, it can be very easy to take things personally when business isn't really going the way that you want it to, right? And obviously with time, you learn that these are just the ebbs and flows, but at the end of the day, we're all human and we're still going to be subject to some of these insecurities and doubts and fears and all of these different things. But my point is, is that it's all about your willingness to be authentic and be consistent. Right, my dad didn't learn how to code overnight. That was a consistent process. I don't know how long it took him, but I'm sure it took him at least a few years to learn how to code proficiently enough to change his job title without even having the degree. Right, but at the same time, there are certain areas, certain fields where you can get that certificate, like cybersecurity, and pretty much go into the workforce within a year. Within a year, right? And if you just start today, by this time next year, you could be making close to, if not a six figure salary, and you could be traveling at the same time. You could be living in various different locations, watching sunsets on the beach like this, and just living your best life in general, right? And to me, this right here is the greatest form of wealth that there is, having time freedom. Because you can always get more money, you can't get more time. And that's why I say that whatever it is that you decide to do, you need to start now. You need to start right now. You should really click off the video and just go ahead and start moving. Start moving in any direction, whatever direction sounds appealing to you.